Webcast Wednesday is a weekly live online training where LabVIEW experts from national instruments and the industry introduce you to one new topic each week that covers different concepts, demonstrations and examples in a way that you can relate to and apply to your applications. So before we begin, let me introduce you to the process of interacting with us during the course of the webinar. At any point of time in the session, if you are facing technical difficulty, or you have a doubt related to the content of the session, please feel free to send it to us through the chat window which you'll be seeing on your screen right now on the right side and our team will be glad to resolve these problems or answer your doubts. In order to maximize your webcast experience and have a learning experience free of glitches, we're offering you two audio options. While you see the presentation on your screen, you can choose to listen to us through voice over internet protocol. This simply means that you receive the audio at your end through your computer speakers. So just adjust the volume of the speakers for a better listening experience. If you're on a slower internet connection, you might experience a sudden audio lag or broken audio reception. In this case, we recommend you listen to us using our toll-free number. You can dial this number from your mobile or telephone free of cost and you will start receiving the audio from your phone lines. So for attendees inside India, the number is 1-800-425-4061 followed by the pin 407248 hash and for attendees outside India number is plus 9144-2370-2370 followed by the pin 507248 hash so today's session is on power monitoring with NI lab view my name is Dhruv Choksi and I am an Applications Engineer here at National Instruments India. So let me, let me start by talking about the power grid. So what you see on your screen right now is basically an image of the earth which was taken at night and various segments of the globe were basically stitched together to give you what you see on your screen right now. And it shows the lighting and the amount of light that originates in the different places of the earth. So you can see a huge chunk in the eastern part of North America, Europe, India, the eastern part of China, and the eastern part of the South America continent. So here basically we have a huge power grid. And if you just look at the United States transmission grid, it consists of 300,000 kilometers of lines, which are operated by 500 companies. So you can just imagine the size and the spread of the power grid across the globe. The power grid basically meaning that the entire network of the generation companies, the distribution companies, the substations, the consumption, the consumers, the end consumers, all of these basically comprise of the power grid. So this is basically what the current state of the power grid is today and we use, uh, we use good technology nevertheless it's old and we basically have a generation plant and then there's a transformer which steps up the voltage then it's transmitted at high voltage and then when you reach the area where you actually want to distribute it there's going to be a neighborhood transformer which will actually step down the voltage and then there'll be local lines which carry this low level voltage to the individual consumer and then there's a small transformer outside on poles which will generally convert and step down to 20 volts which is what we get at our homes so we've got um, you know, we've got analog meters which tell us the amount of energy that we're using in terms of kilowatt hours and this is what the grid basically looks like today. However, the grid is evolving over time so we're going to have a lot of different sources of energy which are going to produce energy and all, uh, all of them are going to pump it into the grid together. Um, there are new techniques that are coming up, there are new business scenarios which are being generated because of the evolution of the grid and it's basically moving slowly towards a better system. So currently we've got very partial control and the grid is not optimized. There might be times when your demand is higher than the generation and there might be times when the generation goes waste because there isn't so much demand. So there is poor integration of renewable sources as well and there's a lot of reactive maintenance which is required. So then as we move on, we talk about you know, ways and methods of improving the scenario as it exists today. So the future is basically a smart grid. Now what do I mean by a smart grid? So basically engineers and scientists worldwide are collaborating to create a smarter grid to improve the grid integration of renewable energy sources 
to implement automated analytics, to um, advance situation awareness, improve overall energy efficiency, and so on. So National Instruments offers design tools, test systems, and embedded deployment platforms which gives these engineers the ability to rapidly explore new approaches to streamline discovery and production and to deploy their innovations in ruggedized measurement and control systems. So this is the aim, this is what NI is out there to bring in the area of the smart grids. So basically, as you can see on your screen, you're going to have a lot of more interconnectivity, a lot of nodes in the entire network where there would be processors, taking inputs from different sensors and detecting changes quickly understanding what those changes mean for the system and implementing those changes in real time so that you know there is uh, minimum wastage of the energy that is being generated uh, minimum problems maximum efficiency and also you should be able to source the cheapest energy from the cheapest source not necessarily only what your discom provides you so all these all these improvements together is something that come up in the form of a smart grid and this is what NI is out there to make possible for the engineers who are trying to do this. So basically what we want is better data collection and visibility which enables you to understand the situation better. Uh, we want smarter and automatic protection schemes and integration of green generation storage and demand management and response in real time. So in order to do this basically you need a process called power monitoring. You basically have to be in a position to accurately find out the energy usage and the energy efficiency. Uh, you need to be able to monitor the power transmission and distribution lines as well as the generation and storage plants. So if you just look at the power transmission and distribution, you come to a point where you understand that you need to do power quality monitoring, you need to do phaser measurement. Um, if you move on to your power generation, you need to again monitor the quality of your power there. You also need to monitor the quality maybe of your solar plants and your wind turbines as well because these are going to be the alternate renewable sources of energy. And then if you come to your location or if you come to the end user again you need to monitor the power, the amount of power, the quality of power, the power factor. All these are um, quantities which have an implication not just on um, your bill because you need to pay extra if you have a bad power factor, but also on the overall efficiency of the entire system. So in order to make this possible, you need to do power monitoring. And in order to make power monitoring possible, NI provides the right tools. So let's have a look at that. So this is something that I had put together, um, which shows a little compact DAC, which is uh, a rugged instrumentation platform that NI provides. And I'm basically going to be monitoring two different loads. One is an inductive load and one is a resistive load. So I I'll show you that demo in just a moment. So before that, let's move on to what the actual NI tools are. So if you go to talk about um, the uh, the kind of toolkits, the kind of products, the hardware, the software that NI provides to do uh, power monitoring, basically what, what is on your screen on the top left is a block diagram of a very simple LabVIEW program that I will um, open up and show you right now. It basically acquires voltage and current which you can further take on, do some processing, um, you can easily find out the power and do a bunch of measurements following that. This is also something called the electrical power suite, which is an add-on toolkit which is available with LabVIEW, which you can see on your right side. So there are, there are a bunch of functions which are made available to LabVIEW once you've installed that. And you can use those to do a bunch of analysis on one, two, three different phases of power lines that you've got. If you move to the bottom, on the left hand side you have the compact DAC platform which is connected to a PC and you can acquire your voltage and current from the compact DAC and carry it to your PC, understand what that data means, calculate the power and maybe log it, send some algorithmic results to another actuator or whatever you want. So the demo I'm going to show you right now is based on compact DAC with two um, analog IO nodes which will acquire my voltage and current. I'll take, I'll take you to that in just a moment. And on the right side at the bottom what you see is the Compact Trio which is another deployable platform that NI provides on which you can create programs and easily deploy them in order to do closed loop control or, or acquisition and processing and actions based on the data that you process. So uh, let me take you through the demonstration that I've created right now.
So here is the front panel of the VI that I've got. It's basically a VI that acquires voltage and current from the different channels and these are in turn used to calculate the power and energy that is being consumed. So I've got three channels here which I'm monitoring for both voltage and current. However, I've got loads currently loaded onto only two of the three channels. So one of them is a resistive load which I have turned on and which is drawing a peak voltage of around 300 volts which uh, is visible on your screens right now. And besides that, now I'm going to turn on an inductive load. I've got a fan. It's a coil. And you can see as, as soon as I turn it on, you can, you can see that it's drawing about 150 volts peak to peak, which is visible. I can directly read this off the graph. So I'm regulating the speed of the fan using a regulator. So it's on the minimum speed right now. I'm just going to increase that now. And you can see that it's drawing about 220 volts peak to peak at the moment. And I'll increase the speed to the maximum. Now you can see it's about 340 or 350 volts peak to peak. Right, so this is for the voltage. I can just click on this tab here to show me the current waveforms. So this is a very simple VI that can be created. I'll show you how to create VI of this sort on your own as well. So this is a current waveform and this tab here basically shows us the power measurement values. Uh, it shows me the active power, the fundamental active power and the reactive power as well because I've got not pure resistive load but inductive load as well. And this tab here is going to show me the amount of energy that is being consumed. The active positive energy, the active negative energy, the reactive inductive energy, the reactive capacitive energy. All the different calculations that you want can be done from here. So let me take you back to the voltage waveforms. And I'm going to stop this VI at the moment. And I'll show you a block diagram of a very simple VI that I created, which you can do yourself. So here's a VI which I created. Uh, this is basically the front panel of this VI. And you can see here is the block diagram. So if you see here on the right side I've got the block diagram. It's very, very simple to create. All I have is one little DAC assistant. Uh, you, can, you can get it directly from your function file in terms of the express pairs that you have available. And so let me just take you through that process very quickly. So all you need to do is use this quick drop menu, which is one of my favorites because it saves me a lot of time. Just type in for the DAC assistant drop one DAC assistant on your screen. And if you know that, uh, if you've, you've done LabVIEW before, you'll know that this DAC assistant is very easy to configure because it gives you a dialog box. I can just click on Acquire Signals and it will expand this view. I can go down to Analog Input. It will expand this view further. I'll select Voltage. right? And I've got a module, my 9225 with three channels. So I can just hit on those three and I say finish. Now th these are the three voltage channels for my three phases. I need to add my current channels as well. So I'm going to add current from here. So I'm going to use the 9227 which is the other module for my current. So I'm going to select the three channels here and say okay. And it's going to add the current values here. So it's as easy as that. Now I just need to go down and change my sampling rate which I'm going to convert to a thousand hertz and I'm going to read a hundred samples at a time and I will click on OK. So as soon as I'm done clicking on OK it's going to build the VI for me. 
and it's going to give me a ready-made DAC is now my block library. This is exactly what I had done in the while loop that you see on the top. And all you need to do is take the output, split the signals, select the voltage channels, club them together and put them onto a graph. Select the current channels, club them together, put them onto a graph. And that's it. And then if I just simply run the program, um, you will see that your graphs will update with the voltages and currents. You can see that on the left hand side of your screen on top. So let me just make this a little larger for you guys. Right, so this is the current and the voltage that is going on. My load is still on, so you can see a non-zero voltage here. So that's about it. It's as simple as that. This is the only data acquisition part of it. After this, it's basically all about the processing. It's all about what sort of processing you want to do, what calculations you want to do. Right, so let's talk about my the contest for this week. So we've learned a very basic component of power monitoring, which is that you have certain data acquisition modules which you can use to acquire voltage to 300 volts and current up to 5 amperes. So how, how do you take this forward? What do you actually do? So here's the contest. What I wanted to do is the following. I wanted to create a VI which acquires both voltage and current for three phases in a four-wire star topography. And I wanted to calculate the following. So the first part should be very simple because you've seen what the block diagram should look like for that. And in terms of what you need to do, this is what you need to do. So I wanted to calculate the active power, the reactive power. That's two things. Besides that, I also want you to calculate the phasor representations of the voltage and current for each of the channels. So you'll have totally six phasor diagrams. And along with that, what I want is the energy consumed by each of the channels since that load was switched on. So what I mean by that is basically you turn on your VI, it runs, then I add my load to the channel. And since that instant, how much energy was consumed at any given point of time. So these are the few things that I want you to do. It's not very difficult. They're very uh, basic measurements, but they cover quite a bit of the basic concepts. So uh, this is the contest of the week, and um, that's it for today's session of Webcast Wednesday. We'll be here to answer some of your questions. If you have any more, you can keep posting them and uh, give the contest a try. The videos will be up on the LabVIEW enabled forum. So you can have a look at that and the contest will also be there. So go ahead, build your VIs, post them onto the forums and um, we'll be telling you the results. Alright, so thank you.